Greetings from Bulgaria, I'm Volk and you're about to see one of the most entertaining and surprising vampire stories you've ever witnessed. No, that's not because you've chosen to watch my walkthrough, it's just that the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt's second expansion called Blood and Wine presents one of the most incredible adventures. The vampires in the Witcher's world in Northern Kingdoms are very different than the traditional vampires we know from the children's tales. I've chosen to start from this screen, not because I want to waste your time, but because I want to load one of my older files and begin the expansion from scratch. A couple quick words. This story takes place after the main quest of the original game, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. It is absolutely not related to the first expansion, Hearts of Stone, with an exception of just one or two mentions that I will definitely point out when, you go, when we come to those points. But the stories are not related. Some of the choices you or I have made during the original game will have a very small impact. But again, remember, small impact is still better than no impact. My Geralt is level 39 and he's about to embark on an awesome adventure. How many times did I say that already? Take a quick look in the playlist and you will find the video before this, because this is part 1 of the Blood and Wine walkthrough. I have a part 00, zero where I've explained my favorite build, the one I will be building for in this walkthrough. And uh, I've also told you why I've selected those abilities, what kind of gear I'm equipped with, what gear I'm collecting, why do I love that build. And of course, during that video 00, zero you will find a few links to other guides and tutorials related to the expansion and older ones, of course, from before the expansion. I really wish that we together will enjoy this modestly long walkthrough series because I have an intention to show you absolutely all of the most interesting and important moments from the main story. Plus, as you voted in my poll, some of the most fun and important side quests as well. Shall we begin? Geralt is at the moment in Novigrad. And that's why I wanted to start from the uh, loading screen, because we need to see this. Blood and Wine, welcome to Blood and Wine expansion. Your currently tracked quest has been changed to the first quest of the Blood and Wine expansion, yet we only recommend starting it if your character is level at least 34. Well, my Geralt is level 39, he has completed absolutely everything, well, with the exception of maybe two or three quests. I've never done any of the Gwent quests, so I don't count them here. And I failed a couple of other quests because I had to make a choice, do this or do that. And when you do this, you fail that and vice versa. Okay, to the point. We are in Novigrad. We already have a quest bestowed upon us as soon as we log in for the first time in patch 1.21 and Blood and Wine. The, the, the quest is called Envoys Wine Boys. Look for a new contract on notice boards in Velen. We know where we have to go. We do have a few things to learn here, but since I've already done that in a previous video, let's just quickly skip to the Seven Cats Inn, because that's where the notice board is, where we start the quest for Blood and Wine that is going to send us to Tucson. After many attempts, failed ones, mind you, I have finally learned how to properly pronounce Tucson. Appeal to Sir Geralt of Rivia. This is personally aimed at me, even though it's posted on a notice board. Geralt of Rivia, at the behest of our merciful sovereign, sovereign her illustrious grace Anna Henrietta, we have journeyed to the northern realms to lay before you our mission. A terrible monster has appeared in the Duchy of Toussaint, a beast that has committed heinous crimes against her grace's subjects. Only the most famous among witchers has the ability to destroy the beast. Thus we humbly beseech you to appear in the village of Holloway, where we shall await you in full hope that you will design this deign, damn it, to hear of our vows and liberate our land from the clutches of fear. Yes, I've read these things a couple of times already and yet with some words I still struggle. Forgive me, most of you probably know 
if you didn't know, now you do because of my accent. English is not my native, native tongue and I do struggle from time to time. This message comes from Sirs Palmerin de Launfal and Milton de Peyrac Peyran, knights in the service of Her Grace and the Duchy. There we are. We arrive and we see a kind of an argument happening here already. But we've not got no need for your help. Have no fear, good man. Our labors shall be done quickly. The prowlers to be banished for good. Milton, look. Get out! In the flesh. Hail, Witcher! Let us go inside and greet you as befits an old friend. And you, fear not. We shall put an end to the rule of outlaws soon. Found your message on a notice board. You see, Palmerin, I told you, the griffin at White Orchard. I knew that were we only to follow the tracks of its slayer, we would in the end find Geralt. Milton de Peyrac Peyron and Palmerin de Longfall. Good to see you both. Been years. Be assured, we share your joy. You must forgive us our, uh, surroundings. When we pledged to place the village under our protection, the village elder gave us this hut as our lodgings. He swore it is the best hut in the village. Get involved in some squabble? We discovered that in retreating, the Redanian garrison had left this land's tillers at the mercy of numerous plagues. A tyranny of bandits, the most onerous among them. These plunderers shall soon descend on this village to collect tribute. Milton and I will dissuade them. We are both sworn to fight injustice and oppression wherever they rear their heads. The matter does not concern you, of course, but... Do us the kindness of waiting. Once we have dealt with these marauders, we have a matter we must present to you. So, plan to go out and meet the bandits when they arrive? Fight them? Farmeran wishes first to appeal to their sense of decency. <laughs> but I expect they will be deaf to this. Yeah, completely. We must afford them a chance to stand down. Many a hardened outlaw has left the path of wrongdoing upon hearing words of admonition. Doesn't happen in these lands. Ever. If they do not heed my reprimand, we at least will know we have done all within our means to evade bloodshed. Fine. Naturally, I'll help when Pomeran's rhetoric falls on deaf ears. Excellent. Then we've but to wait for the rogues to arrive. They are coming! Hear that? Your bandits have arrived. Let us go out to greet them. Contemptible cars! <laughs> they mean us! I, Palmer and Delonfall, call upon you to repent. Search your hearts. Do you not see that they are blackened? <laughs> Regular punch and duty here! To prey upon commoners is no honor. To loot their meager stores, abandon the path of shame. And we will spare you. <laughs> right, good jest, that. Had us a laugh. Now, fuck off or we lose our patience and you lose something else. Nay, <laughs> wait, Zorg. These lads are a lark. Mayhaps they know some tricks. Oi, players! Can you toss balls all loopity like? Or do that thing where one spits fire while the other farts! <laughs> Noble Palmerin's giving you a chance. Now I'm gonna give you some advice. Do what he says. Or what? Or you'll find yourself fighting knights errant in the pay of the Duchess of Toussaint. 
And they eat scum like you with their morning porridge. Well, there's three of them. Two turtled up in armor. We'll come back later. Some wench sent them. Folk will say we's a feared of wenches and jesters. Ooh, insulted the Duchess. Not good. Indeed, we cannot let the affront go unpunished. I swear upon the Heron you will pay with your own blood. By the crane, villains, ready your arms. Let's go take care of the archers first. Two of them actually. Look at what we have here. Someone is actually hiding. Not for long. I'd like to show up before we actually continue with uh, the walkthrough further on. I have enemy upscaling active and difficulty level is... Holy crap. Let's speed that march. I forgot that when I um, logged in for the first time in the expansion, this save that I've just loaded is from before the expansion. My, my difficulty has been changed from Death March to Broken Blood uh, and bo blood, blood and Broken Bones. Then don't know why. Well, I would leave the knights to finish him, but they're an awful sloppy and lazy and slow. <laughs> Good vitality. Why do they not emerge? It is over. We have banished the scoundrels, lifted oppression's yoke from their lives. Warned you it'd be like this. Fear you as much as they did the bandits now. Sorry, no fanfares and flowers. You're not in Toussaint. Ugh. It is true what folk claim. In the north, no noble deed goes unthwarted. It is time to go home. And we shall, my friend. Come, Geralt. It's time we delivered our message. Now let's see why exactly these two noble knights arrived. So fess up. What brings you such a long way? We are to deliver Her Grace the Duchess's message in full. With all due ceremony. For tradition? Is sacred in Toussaint. All right, fine. Most honorable Geralt, slayer of monsters and all Ifils nefarious, which prey on the defenseless of this world. For us never have you been known to deny help to the innocent, nor leave widows and orphans to fates undeserved. Answer you now our present summons. Free us from the beast which floods our streets with blood and sows panic in the hearts of rich and poor alike. Come to our aid, Witcher. Thus humbly beseeches you the star-crossed city's most gracious protectress, her illustrious highness, Duchess Anna Henrietta. Shall you answer her call? 
Anna Henrietta really say all that, word for word? Well, in point of fact, she said, bring me the Witcher and dare not spare your horses. Only make certain this time he comes alone. The Ducal Chamberlain added the rest. You know how it is. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I might add, be it unofficially, that a hefty reward awaits. Yet the specifics you will need to verify with her illustrious highness. Might be the most fervent request that I take a contract ever. And the most polite. And now we've got all that behind us. I want to hear more about this beast. Some kind of monster? Just guessing. Most assuredly, though no one has caught a good look at it as yet, our only sure witnesses, bodies massacred in a brutal, horrid manner. Look, some sketches drafted from descriptions given by those who claim they glimpsed the beast. Each quite different. To my mind, these witnesses lie. How many victims so far? Two. When her grace learnt of the second, she discharged us immediately to fetch you, promising grants of land and fortunes in gold, should you answer her summons. An ill wind blows, Geralt. The beast cannot be tracked. Folks say it wields black magic. Also, both victims were nobly born, and the start of a tourney draws near. Mentioned a tourney. Why doesn't the Duchess just call it off? Simply, it is too late. The guests have arrived. The best knights of all lands, relatives of the Emperor. The beast could be a threat to others, not just to her grace's subjects. Got it. Before an aristocrat dies, at best it's a scandal. At worst, a diplomatic incident. Anyone tried to hunt it? Knights Errant, for example? Ha! Many have tried. Baiting, waiting in ambush, but to no avail. The beast is clever. It evades all traps and attacks of a sudden. It is like a ghost. An experienced tracker. This is what we need, with knowledge of monsters. In short, we need you. Beast wields black magic? What makes you say so? The first victim vanished between bites at a feast. And the feast goers none noticed this. They saw but an open window, then heard desperate cries from the street below where a corpse had just been found. The second killing similar. A knight in a locked room. Serpents all about the house. Guards all around the estate. Yet the beast somehow got him out, dragged him to the town square, and killed him there. No one saw, nor heard, a thing. We have no fear of creatures against which sword and shield protect. But of this beast, nothing is known. Safe that it cannot be traced, kills effortlessly, and with no rhyme or reason we can discern. Uh, I sometimes think back to all the contracts I've ever taken from sovereigns. Can't name hardly any where I came out ahead. You cannot be thinking to refuse. <sighs> no. Just struck by a thought. How the Duchess can sometimes be... Mm, ...demanding. So you accept the contract? Excellent! We must set off at once. We long wanted this land searching for you. Yet time is of the essence. Ready to go, soon as you're packed. Ha! Ah, then post haste to Tucson. To Tucson! To Tucson! The land of love and wine. As soon as we arrive, we're about to discover trouble. But that's what Geralt's life is about. Let's see it. Tucson, the land of love and wine. Exactly how I remembered it. You will find Beauclair has changed some these past years. Walk about when you have the chance. You will see for yourself. To me, place always seemed straight out of a fairy tale. Knights errant, elven palaces. You insinuate that we are somehow odd? I shall prove you wrong. This I pledge on the Heron. You gotta love the way the knights speak. 
And here is our trouble. Or maybe not. But most likely, yes. And it has a weapon. Hmm. Eh, you know what they say, the bigger they are. Let's buff up accordingly. Now first we gotta go through these damn pop-ups, introductions to the changes they've created, they've made with the latest patch 1.21. Unfortunately I do not remember what was the appropriate oil, but I believe it's Ogroid because, well, it's that kind of a monster. My favorite decoctions, Ekimara, damage dealt to foes that generates vitality, may not be the most suitable one in this case. But I have plenty of toxicity until the limit and I can afford to use both my favorite ones. The second one being Katakan, which gives me extra crit. And I might just have a chance to use once or twice, maybe Towny O. Let's go and fight the beast. Theo, watch out. My I killed a monster. Remove my shield. <laughs> that was a close one. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. was a risky moment. Why would the sheep desire to go right through the corpse? Big beast. Single-handed, none too wise. Neither is love born of wisdom, Witcher. So, Guillaume, out with it. Which fair damsel inspired you to vow to kill that filth? The most beautiful among them. If he wishes to guard her name a secret, he need not reveal it. You I do not know, sir, nor seem you a knight, yet still I am profoundly grateful, nay, indebted to you for your succor. This trophy, sir, is yours. A giant this close to human settlements? Strange. Well, that was no ordinary giant. His name was Goliath. Rumored to have been a knight once, but one who broke his vows. For this, the Lady of the Lake transformed him into a wild giant and banished him into the Gorgon Hills. So he came back down? Why? Several times each year, hunger chased him into the lowlands. Goliath had killed and devoured many shepherds. Guillaume's hunt served a noble cause. At any rate, it's a tale for more agreeable environs. I'll take the trophy. Why not? Could find someone who'll pay to buy it. Put up a good fight against the giant. Got experience battling monsters? None. In Tucson, we mostly chase bandits. But I vowed I'd bring my heart's champion the head of a monstrosity. As the famed Gottfried, known as the Giant Killer, did. You don't mean to hunt the beast, I hope. The matter's best left to Geralt. Another challenge awaits me. Yet if Geralt is to hunt the beast, he ought to know. It struck again. The river surrendered a corpse. It washed up in the meander by the cockatrice. Damien de Latour's guardsmen are there already, securing the area. Securing the area? Better go there now before they trample any tracks, manhandle any evidence. Set forth, then. I shall ride for the city to inform her gracious magnificence that Geralt has arrived. We'll meet later, 
near Guillaume's tent of the Tourney Grounds. I shall take you then to see her grace. Time to get the trophy from the beast. We've got a new bestiary entry added for Goliath. Although they've already told us pretty much uh, all we wanted to know, and yes, I do remember uh, properly it seems, he is a type of giant, of course, and thus he is weak to this oil, Ogroid oil, and of course he is weak to Kuen. Kuen is one of my favorite signs, so I use it pretty much all the time, regardless of what I'm fighting. Goliath, according to the legend, Goliath has once been a knight who violated his vows for which he was punished by the Lady of the Lake. Transformed into a giant, he fled into the mountains and would only descend into the inhabited lowlands when hunger forces him to it. There is no knowing how much truth lies in that legend, yet it is incontrovertible fact that this dangerous giant globed up she shepherds and sheep alike and was so wildly feared, governesses used him to scare children into eating their vegetables. Though he came across as a wild, unthinking beast, Goliath used simple tools and any item could turn into a deadly weapon in his powerful hands. When fighting Geralt, Goliath wielded a milestone, a millstone, making his every blow truly crushing. Luckily, Geralt already had some experience slaying giants and made quick work of Goliath as well. With the much appreciated help of three knights, Milton the Peyrac, Peyron, Palmerin the Lone Fall and Guillaume the Lanfall. By the way, the guy with the weirdest name ever, Guillaume, I, for, I apologize if I can never pronounce it the same twice in a row, but this guy is gonna give us a long and fantastic side quest which we will explore in one of the next parts of the walkthrough. This right here marks the end of part one. I really hope that you've enjoyed it and I absolutely believe that you're, you're gonna go back for the next ones and we'll keep journeying through to sound together. See you next time. Bye bye. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If so, click the like button and help me out. Also leave a comment and let me know what you think. Visit my website vogue.com for daily videos and news and stay in touch by following me on Facebook and Twitter. To help me improve and expand, consider becoming my patron with a small monthly pledge.